Isaiah chapter 66, Revelation 66, book of the Bible. Thus saith the Lord, that's important, the heaven is my throne, where God sits as king, ruler, God almighty. The foot, the earth is my footstone. Now just picture that. <laughs> A hassock, which is a which is a, a footstool, is it, a very little thing in the, in the house of all the furniture. And the Lord says, "The earth, that's my footstool. Put his feet up on, and that's where the very feet of Jesus Christ walked. He didn't walk on Mars. He didn't walk on the moon. Where is the house?" That ye build unto me. You mean all the church buildings today? God says, where's the house you built for me? Do they not call the house of God? <laughs> We're not talking about all the Baptist church buildings. When the Bible speaks about the house of God in the Old Testament, it is speaking about that temple that Solomon built that was destroyed Then Ezra and Nehemiah built later on. We're not in Ezra and Nehemiah. The only house of God in the New Testament, the church age, is the individual bodies of people called the church. It is wrong to say, oh, we got the house of God. We got the. Uh, uh, no. Because in your house of God, you've got people who are unsaved. After all, you invited them to Sunday morning. The house of God is not sa uh, unsaved people. And the biblical stance of the house of God is that temple that Solomon built. Later on, Ezra and Nehemiah will rebuild. And then you got Herod's temple. I don't know if you go far as to say the Antichrist temple. And then you'll have the temple that Ezekiel's people that Jesus will have in the millennium. And in the church age, the house of God are individual, living, saved Christians born again. That you don't sing happy birthday to the new birth, you sing happy birthday to the old birth. You're saying, where is the house ye build unto me? And the other, the other day we read, I forget, a couple days ago we read about, where is the house of the Lord? Look at chapter 64, verse 11. Our holy and beautiful house, that's the temple, where our fathers praised thee, Solomon, is burned up with fire. <laughs> Prophecy. The temple's going bye-bye. And where is the place of my rest? That's the millennium. For all these things hath my hand made. God's the creator of all things. All those things have been say the Lord. Creation. Never evolution. Or whatever stances there are out there. I don't know what I don't know what other stances there are besides creation and evolution, but it's creation. I don't know what other religions teach. I don't care what other religions teach. It's creation. I say I know about evolution because I was brought up in evolution in a public school system. All right, so. But to this man whom I love. What man? What man has there been in the context Besides the Lord himself. <laughs> Even to him. Okay. 
that is poor and a contrite spirit. And if you look at the, if you see this on the video, you see I have in Webster's 1828 dictionary, contrite is to be broken. Worn or bruised. You know, life has worn you down. I, I, am a, I am wearing a contrite heart now because you know what? Life has worn me down. I am sick and tired of people lying to me. I am sick and tired of Christians lying to me. I'm sick and tired of these churches. I'm just sick and tired of life itself. I am sick and tired. You know, the doctor gives me medication. It's supposed to help me. And yet the medication, the side effects make me feel worse. I'm tired of that. I'm tired to have to put money to pay for gas. I'm tired to have to pay extra amount of money for groceries. And, be, you know, my, the, the prices result in, in New York with the stock and shit. I'm tired of all that. You know, I just want to go home to the Lord. I want to be with the Lord where everything is just, everything is right, everything is holy. And I'm tired of this world. This world's not my home. I'm tired of people yelling at me for preaching the gospel, and yet I pray for them. And I seek their welfare of coming to know the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's being broken and worn. And that don't happen overnight. That's not a newborn babe in Christ. That, that's not an infant in Christ. That, that, that is someone in Christ that they're of maturity. And they have fought the good fight. And they have taken a beating. And their armor is dented. And poor of the world. To the world you're no value who cares about you. And to the and we'll see to the Christians too. And, and all right, poor. I can do the poor. Well, I can do the contrite spirit. But tremble at my word. Who does that? You say, well, Sally, don't you? I mean, as well as you do, don't you tremble at the? No. There are particular places in the Bible I read it and I'm involved in that sin and I don't fall down and, and shake. Now there are times I do. Not all the time. When you read and study your Bible and you come to a particular place, you, not somebody else that God is talking to, God's writing to. And it makes your heart <laughs> bleed. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. Oh, who cares? Man's no better than, than the beast. And the beasts are no better than the man. Heck, today you guys saved the whales. Never mind a man's soul. A man today will, will, will go to jail for life for killing a dog, but he kills a human. He that sacrifices a lamb as he cut off a dog's neck. Now remember, you're reading the time of the Old Testament, a dog is an unclean animal. You're like, you know, just it's a dog, you know, just it's gotten in my crops, it ruins it's killed my blood. They just killed a dog, get rid of it, who cares? And that's what the attitude to a verse three is. You know, I'm doing something, I'm sacrificing a God, who cares? My pastor made me do it. Because when we go run over there to Malachi, if I don't give to God, God's not going to fill my, my, my warehouse. God's not going to fill my storehouse if I don't give. And there may be possibly fire and electricity and lightning come down if I don't give. And we're looking at what Paul said. Give, give because you're willing to give, not grudgingly. Now, this is not grudgingly. This, you know what? I'm going to give to the Lord. Who cares? It's become nonchalant. Every Sunday morning is a Sunday morning. Nothing particular about it. He that offers an oblation, there's the offering. F is he offers swine blood. It, it, it's, first of all, it's unclean. The word today would be, it's not kosher. 
God is not accepted. And we read the other day, they're actually eating pork. So, you know, God, I killed a pig. Here's the blood. And God's like, whoa, wait a minute. That's dietary law. No. That's, don't even touch it. Don't even, listen, that, that prodigal son that went and hanged out with the swine, that's unclean. That man was Jewish. That not only, you know, he came to it, he is living in a wealth of uncleanness by being with those pigs. And whoever kept those pigs at, 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 at the maniac of Dara, where, the, where the, the, the devil said, we'll go into the swine. Whoever kept, well, they could be Gentiles. Unclean. Those unclean devils said, the next unclean thing besides that man is we'll take the devils. He that burneth incense as he bless an idol. Sacrilege. It's everything that God says. Look, 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 look what it says. An ox, that's an offering. A lamb, that's an offering. Oblation, offering, obl that's an offering. The incense, that's an offering. And then you look to uh, murder. A dog. A swine. An idol. Those are all against what God said to do. I'm religious. I'm religiously the law, but I'm doing it against the law. Look how well I'm doing. Look how God's blessing me. And I told that to my daughter today at the farmer's market. You know, these people think, hey, God's blessing me. I'm making money. And I got a nice little tent here. And, and they think they're well with God. The moment they die, what if what God brings the judgment and there's no more money and there's no more food to sell and buy? Yea, that's what the devil said. They had chosen their own ways. Here you go. The murder, the dog, the swine, the idol. That's their ways, not God's way. And their soul delighteth in their abomination. And listen, as much as somebody goes to church today, church building, church service, there were people that went to temple in the Old Testament and they were just as wicked as anything. Don't believe me? Look at the life of ministry, how Jesus dealt with the high priest, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. They were not right with God. They had every principle correct. They tied the mint. They washed their hands. And they were as far away from God as far as the east is from the west. And that when a sinner stepped in there and with her tears washed the feet of Jesus and anointed him, they would, what are you doing? He sits with sinners. Oh, no, no, no. You're the sinner. You're the unrepentant sinner. That person's gotten right with God. That, that person's glorified God. That's the man that is poor, contrite of spirit, trembles at the word. The man is not, verse 3. God don't look at that man. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. There, there's nothing worse than for a person to have fears and anxiety where there's no remedy. And you may have pills and you may have alcohol, you may have tobacco, you may have sex and that may relieve you for a moment. But then your anxiety and your fears will come back when you wake from your drunkenness. And when your pill wears off, your fears and your anxieties are still there. And maybe the government say, well, we can't give you that drug no more. 
Maybe the pharmacist will say, that's a $5 copay. I ain't got $5 no more. Oh, no, we ain't going to give you your bill. Then what do you do? That's why so many people are strung out on drugs. They're running from something. They're trying to get away from something. And they're not going to God. Because when I have called, none did answer. And we've seen that seems to be the, the overflowing theme of the final chapters of Isaiah. I've called you. I've reached out to you. I've sent my prophets. And today in the church, aid, there's so many people on their cell phones. And God's reaching out to you. We see at the farmer's market, there are people, that, they got a business. Whatever it is. And they're on their cell phones instead of doing business. And there's a preacher over there. And he's preaching the truth. And you're wearing a shirt about whatever Jesus can do for you. And you're not turning to him. You're not walking up to that preacher and say, what must I do to be right? Uh, maybe, maybe you're saved. What must I do to live right? How about that one? Okay, I'm saved. What must I do to live right? No. Man, if it would be possible, people would have two cell phones. And it's an irritation that when you go out to a restaurant, you see this family, and they're all on their cell phone, tagging, blah, blah. I mean, if Jesus Christ tarries, and we are given to the time that one day archaeology will dig up our body, they're going to find a particular mode of today's people in this age. They're going to find our, their body is going to be well, they had a particular expression with their hand. Their hands were all crunched. That's because the cell phone decayed. And their hands are left. They probably wake up in the morning. They're probably on their deathbed. I want, I want a cell phone, but I don't want to talk to God. I avoid the cell phone. I don't answer the phone. You call my you call my number. Most chances are you're gonna get my you're gonna get my voicemail, and I'll, I'll I, I screen my calls if my phone ever works at all. Most of the time, I'll turn off my phone on Sunday morning because for for service. As respect to my pastor, I will turn off my phone, you know, off, or I'll turn off the, the the ringer and all that, and I won't know the Wednesday <laughs> the phone's still off. And my pastor would be like, hey, I tried calling you. Hey, the phone's still off. I didn't even know it. You know? God has reached out and called, but not too many people today answer. When I spank, they did not hear. We've been six years preaching the gospel at the farmer's market. And what is their response? 911, what's your emergency? We got this guy over here screaming and hollering about Jesus. You say it ain't that bad. The cops told me. The city of Daytona Beach told me. The representatives of the city of Daytona Beach said 911 gets phone calls about you every week. Why don't they call upon God? He's calling upon them. I had a police officer a couple weeks ago. Oh, they, no one calls 911. You need to check with your supervisor because him and I were laughing about it. I've had two or three police officers and I had a city attendant tell me that it is comical. People call 911 on you. Oh, God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt. Uh, and we get we get people come along and they're elderly. And they're, uh, I got a 70-year-old woman. Every time she walks by me. Uh, and I say, you can still hear me. I don't want to hear God. You look a sissy. 
And that's the main thing. And that's many Christians. They go to church. They hear the message. Five minutes they walk out the doors of their church. What was the message about? I don't remember. But look, I got Mother's Day flowers. Look, we got gifts. Hey, we got three visitors. Yay! What was the message? I don't remember. God's calling. That used to be the old time single when you called a number, it was busy or off the hook. I missed that sound. And then they don't hear. The preacher preaches. You got Bible believing King James, Bible believing preachers preaching the word from pulpits on the internet, on the radio. There are good pit preachers out there. They are preaching the word of God, and people are like. Well, you know, when I get out of here, the, the, the restaurant. I hopefully they get. Hopefully they got the chicken I like. I, I, I got contact Aunt Susie. Oh, I can't believe what I got to do to work tomorrow. Well, I'd rather be at the beach. And then when I get up and teach and preach, like, hey, he's kicking my guy. He, he he said something bad about Easter. He's telling me that Christmas is wrong and, and the Christmas tree is an idol. I don't want to hear it. And I've heard pastors say that. But they did evil before their eyes. The ears are turned off. The phones are turned off. But before their eyes. The lust of the eyes. I'm amazed that I have sat in churches. And I've seen it. Where adults. Never mind the children. I have watched adults with their phones. Play video games in a church service. And they walk. Uh, 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 God doesn't do anything for my life. Bingo, bunker, the bingo, the bunker, the bunker. I have seen adults sitting there filling in little circles. And uh, listen, not listen, not. I, I understand the child to be doing stick figures and war figures in the bulletin of the church. And fill, okay, you know, a child. He, I've seen adults do it. Their eyes are something else. I have seen people go into a Bible-believing church, King James, with no Bible. Uh, what are you going to put your eyes on? If it's not a Bible. Oh, yeah, I know where you're on. Uh, they're on that woman. They're on the fly. I mean, I, I come from Connecticut. Uh, Florida. In Connecticut, we used to get bees. I, I don't have, have it in Florida. In Connecticut, we would get bees that visit in the congregation. And everybody's telling you, watch it. Be watching that bee. <laughs> Number one, and hey, it's more interesting than the message. The preacher that I sat under. Sorry to say that the preacher, the bumblebee, was more interesting than the preacher. But, and then, you know, you don't want to get stung. I mean, some preachers, they're as boring as... Phew, they're in the wrong position. And choose that in which I delight not. There are Christians, there are people in Isaiah's time under the law, and there are Christians doing things that God said, I don't like that. And you know what the Christian answer is? I like it. Well, God does it. I don't care what God does. Now listen, I, I, I have had with the Easter and Christmas, more for the Christmas, I've had people in a congregation of a church get all upset, and I've had the pastor come to me and tell me I was wrong. God defend the people of the church. you got to protect your sins. I'm telling you right now, that Easter, that, ha that Halloween, that Christmas, and that Valentine, and the worship of the d dead soldiers, God is not delighted in it. It's wrong. Hear the word of the Lord. There you are. Ye that trembled at his word. There's the trembling at the word again. God has left verses 3 and 4. Okay, there are people that don't care. Verse 5. Those that do care, those that do honor God, keep 
trembling at the word. Keep fearing God. Keep in the word. Today, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. But rightly dividing the word of truth. There are many pastors, many Christians today, they're going to be made ashamed. And they don't care. They don't know how to deal with a Jehovah Witness. And they're easy. They don't know how to deal with a Catholic. And they're easy. I have never done with a, with a Mormon. But I guarantee it's probably easy. You say, what do you do? You study the Word of God. The Jehovah Witness. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. The Catholic. Get them in the Bible. <laughs> Show the Catholic. The Bible says, call no man your father. It's that simple. Oh, well, we're the church from Jesus Christ. All right, let me show you your church in the book of Judges many, 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 many years before Jesus was born or Peter, the first pope. Peter, the first pope? Okay, let me show you the scriptures where Jesus called him the devil. Your rock is Peter? Let me show you in Deuteronomy who says their rock is not as our rock. Oh, they get angry, get out. Okay, well, you know, that happens. People want to hang on to their sins like the, like the Christian wants to hang on to it and get highly upset when you preach against their sins. All they that live godly shall, shall suffer persecution. Yea, have I become your enemy because I've told you the truth. It's so simple. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at the word. Your brethren hate you. Your brethren that I've got Christians that hate me because of my trembling and my study and my hearing the word of the Lord. And I'm talking about pastors too. I've got pastors right now lying about me. You want me to give their names? You'll be shocked to find out what pastor right now is lying about me. Oh, there's some things that are true, but there are some things that are lies, and a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Your brethren that hate you, that cast you out for my name's sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, they are getting... Listen, that's throughout the whole story of the book of Acts. They were killing Paul, trying to kill Paul because he was a follower of Jesus Christ. Let the Lord be glorified. But he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. Listen, I got joy serving the Lord. You know what they got when they hear me? They're not so happy. I guarantee, you know, they hear they hear me say something about their sins and all that. And they, uh, one of the latest things they don't like right now is a word I came up. Baptist Catholic. Oh, that hurts. It's true. You're a Baptist church with the Catholic seasons, the Catholic feasts that don't belong in a Baptist. What else am I going to call you? Well, yeah, well, the voice of the noise from the city, a noise from the city, <laughs> noise, that's not good. Moses and, and, and Joshua came down, they heard a noise. Joshua says it's the sound of war. Moses is the sound of singing. What were they hearing? Oh, Chip fil a and the cow that can't spell chicken. Oh, how great it is. It's a Christmas Jesus chicken place. Now see that? Well, uh, oh, he's making fun of Chick-fil-A. You mean the Southern Baptists who are not King James? Who ordain women? 
Where'd you get that? Where'd you get Chick-fil-A with Southern Baptist? Why don't you know that? Why don't you see the fact that they're marketing to you to get your Christian money? That's all they want. Oh. The voice from the temple. The voice of the Lord. That rendereth recompense to his enemies. Well, God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. How do you explain hell? When the Bible says it's the wrath of God. God's not willing that any should perish. Even a lost soul in hell, God doesn't love. God didn't appreciate it. God didn't do it. You did it by rejecting what God said. Before she travailed. Now verse 7, always, travailing of a woman always points to a reference in a way to the tribulation period. The tribulation period is seen like a woman just about to go into labor and in birth of a baby. And we had, my wife and I had it when we were in the hospital for my son. And there was a woman just screaming. And my wife said, What's, is she okay? Her and her husband decided to have natural childbirth with no medications at all. And my wife's like, put me under, put me under, go, go for it, go for it. Before she travailed, she brought forth, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. That's out of order. It's usually after the pain comes a man child. Before the tribulation period, Jesus Christ was born from the nation of Israel. The travail of the children of Israel, the time of Jacob's trouble, is because they rejected that child that was born of the virgin. Who has heard such a thing? Who has heard such a thing as a virgin birth? Isaiah 53, who has believed our report? I have. Saturday mornings, people have heard that report. Now, I don't preach about the virgin birth every week, but I've mentioned it. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? No, creation was in seven days. Seventh day, God rested. Or shall a nation be born at once? It took quite a few years for Israel to be born. Or as soon as Zion travaileth, oh, there is the tribulation, she brought forth her children. The nation of Israel was brought forth before the tribulation. But even Jacob had tribulation. When his sons were brought forth. Man, that guy was getting a lot of abuse from Laban. He was deceived twice about his wives. He was deceived, I think he said, ten times. The guy said, all right, I'll work seven years for Rachel. Honeymoon night, great and wonderful, great. Hoo -hoo, he gets his bride and, you know, the marriage tent. And he wakes up in the morning with Leah. And he works seven more years for Rachel. And he gets Rachel and he gets Leah and he finds out Rachel and Leah are at odds with each other. And they're battling it out. And meanwhile, you know, Laban's worked this amount of years for the cattle and Laban's like, oh, no, 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 stay a little longer. And then Jacob finally gets to the point, you know what, I'm out of here. Honeys, all four of them, children, we're gone. And even then Laban chases them with a hot disposition and ready to kill them. That's Old Testament. Shall I bring to birth God and not cause to bring forth? Shall I desire such a nation and that nation never be? 
saith the Lord, shall I cause to bring forth and shut up the womb? That's kind of interesting. Do you know the story of, of Sarai? What was interesting about Sarai? What was interesting about Rebecca? What was interesting about uh, Rachel? What was, uh, what was about Elizabeth? They were all women that were barren. And they're all in the, in the line in the family of Jesus Christ. You say, Elizabeth? Were not Elizabeth and Mary cousins? Isn't it interesting that Mary was of Judah, Elizabeth was, of, was, was Levi, the priest, and they said that Mary and Elizabeth were cousins, making Jesus kin to the Levites and the tribe of Judah. And all those women were barren. And by miraculous of God, they had a child. Sarai, Sarah, 90 years old. Grandma had a baby. How come that's not in the history books? In the schools? You would think that a 90-year-old woman having a baby, you would think that would make at least one class in the classroom of history in the public school system. And a 100-year-old dad. Come on, Dad, let's go throw the ball. All right, that's how I think let's throw the ball. Dad, wake up. It ain't fun playing with Dad. He, 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 he falls asleep when we play baseball. Poor Dad. Poor. Now cause forth that, that shut the womb, saith the Lord. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem. And be glad with her. We've been talking about, you know, the children, the child, the children. Here it is. Jerusalem, the city of the Jew. All ye that love her. I love Jerusalem. I pray for Jerusalem. I support the Jews. I pray for the Jews. I support missionaries in Israel. What do you say about Hamas launching missiles? I say send them a witness about Jesus Christ. And if they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, blow them the kingdom come. As far as Hamas and the nation, the PLO, I said, we got nuclear submarines to take care of them. That's well, cruel. I will curse them that curse you. Talking about Israel. They're cursing Israel. The KKK don't love Jerusalem. They hate the Jews. Rejoice with joy with her, Jerusalem. All ye that mourn for her. You're more, hey, listen, she's in battle today. The dumb of the rock is sitting there. The Jews are not living right. The Roman Catholics are running around there. Ishmael's running around there. And just Christians is spending their foolish money. We visit the holy city. <laughs> They're going there spending money, but they ain't going over there with the gospel. How many Christians go over to over to the Holy Land experience and not give out one gospel tract to one of the children of God? And they come back, look, I got the footprint of Jesus. Oh, look, I got a seed of a mustard and a necklace. I got all kinds of crap from the Holy City. But I didn't tell one Jew one thing about Jesus Christ the Messiah. Shame on you. They sent me over to Holy Land. They'd be sending me back to America. Don't send this guy back. He puts his place loaded with gospel tracts. That ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of consolation. Breast milk is one of the most healthiest things to have of all food. God made breast milk. But, you know... You can't spend your whole life on breast milk. You got to grow up. You got to move up to a steak meal. And there are Christians in churches today they can't handle. Oh, prophecy and tribulation, revelation, prophecy, revelation, tribulation, prophecy, revelation, tribulation. And, and, oh, the mark, mark, mark. What about the book of Daniel? I don't do the Old Testament. What about going out witnessing to the world and telling them about the gospel? 
Is that in the book of Revelation? They don't know nothing. They're sucking on milk. They haven't grown. They haven't aged. Their spirituality is they are retard because they and their church won't grow. That you may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory, Israel. There is much you can learn from Israel, and there is much. I mean, listen, a, 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 I haven't done it, but a Christian would be would be great to sat down with a rabbi. Say, listen, rabbi, I'm a Christian. Away from the tr traditions. What is it you guys really teach out alone on that? And if you two were to sit down properly, ye would be able to tell you know what they believe in, and the traditions and all that. You would should be able to say, hey, listen, it, doesn't that point to Jesus? Isn't that the life of Jesus? That's what Paul did. He didn't have a New Testament. Paul didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Paul did not have Romans, Galatians. If you, he wasn't writing them down yet. Paul did not use the Romans road. Well, I, I, I can imagine Paul. I'm going to tell you about Jesus Christ. But wait a minute. i got to sit down and write the Romans road. Hold on first. Wait a minute. i got I got to write the Romans road. <laughs> Foolish. I can't see Paul. You come to church? <laughs> For thus saith the Lord. Oh, that's important. Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river. That sounds familiar. That sounds very familiar. I wonder where Christians know where it is. When peace like a river attendeth my way. Yeah, it's a story about a man whose family was lost in a shipwreck, but it also comes from Revelation 66 about the nation of Israel. You took your eyes off Israel to look... <laughs> kind of stole the blessing of Israel there, didn't you? Not all hymns are, are to be right. They're not the Bible. Well, it's a Bible verse. Yeah, but when peace like a river, run back up to verse 10. That's Jerusalem. Not about a, a, a saved man who, whose family died at sea. That ship was not going anywhere near Jerusalem. I got a whole series on the biblical truth of our hymns. You want to look it up. The glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. There's coming a time that the Jew and the Gentile will be gathered together a mystery set forth in the church period by the salvation of Jesus Christ alone. And there's coming a period where the Jew and Gentile are going to meet together before King Jesus in Jerusalem in the millennium. And they'll meet in Jerusalem. The Christian Jew and Gentile don't meet in Jerusalem. We meet all over the world. Then shall ye suck. Ye shall born upon her side. And be dangled upon her knees. It's a child on a, on a mother's knee. That's not Israel today. <laughs> As one who his mother, by the way, this verse here has been perverted. As a mother, comforter's child, you'll find quoted on the internet. It doesn't say as a mother. It says as one, they took away some words there, Eve. As one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you. Look at that. That's God speaking. There's God liking to as a mother and not a father to the nation of Israel. 
and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem, Jewish. And when you shall see this, your heart shall rejoice the millennium, and your bones shall flourish like a herb, health, and the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants, Jesus Christ, the right hand of the Lord, and his indignation towards his enemy, second advent, where he's cast the enemies off into hell. The goats, second advent. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, Revelation 19, out of his mouth, his eyes, his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with his fury, second advent, and his rebuke with flames of fire, Revelation 19. That's the lion of the tribe of Judah that was once the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. He got angry and grew up. That's the one. Oh, I hate sin, but I... Uh, uh, uh. Looks like he's, he's condemning sinners. For by fire... The Bible says our guys are consuming fire. By his sword... Comes out of his mouth the word of God, Hebrews 4... Will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Not all people go to heaven. Many will go the broad way that leads to destruction. They shall they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garment in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. Remember, we read about that the other day. Those gardens. And those gardens are Tamus. The Oriental people have very famous things of the gardens, both little miniature ones and huge ones. Eating swine's flesh, we ate that the other day. That's unclean, not kosher. The abomination and the mouse. They're eating mice. That's an abomination. And if I remember, if I, I if, if I don't get too much involved, but there's something about COVID-19 and the eating of mice. I, I don't I don't get involved in any of that man. This is something I read somewhere. So you take it to what it is. You study that nonsense. Okay, you know. I'm just thrown out. Shall be consumed together, say the Lord. How are they consumed? At the second coming, at the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're burnt up in that flame. Jews that are not adhering to the law in the tribulation period, which I've been told that they're not under the law in the tribulation period. Well, how are they getting consumed for violating the law in the tribulation period when Jesus comes? You know, mice might be your only diet in the tribulation period. You know, mice were the, the leading cause of the, the black death. History repeats itself. For I know their works, God says, and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, second advent, united nations, and they shall come and see my glory, Jesus Christ coming. I will set a sign among them. Jews require a sign. And I will send those that escape of them unto the nations. Tarshish, pole, blood. And draw the bow, <coughs> war, to Tubo, Javan, to the isles afar of off that have not heard my fame. Neither have seen my glory. They shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. There are nations that are going to be welcomed by God, Jesus Christ, by the mercy and grace of helping the Jews. And how are they going to go in the millennium, and how are they, they going to declare Jesus? Hey, you know, all I did was help one of Jesus' brethren, and Jesus helped me. I mean, nothing but the blood of Jesus no, not for the Gentiles, not for the Gentiles at the end of the tribulation. For all that I've done for the Jews, and I didn't even know I was helping the Jews. 
How's that for a salvation? How about being saved and you didn't even know you were going to be saved? And they shall bring all your brethren, the Jews, for an offering unto the Lord out of nations upon horses and upon chariots and litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem. And look at they're going to bring. What's the offering of the Gentile nation? They're bringing Jews. And they're not going to sacrifice Jews. You know what offering they bring to the Antichrist? They bring the Jews. What's the Antichrist do with the Jews? He sacrifices and beheads them. Things have been reversed. These Gentile nations are going to be like, wow. That's not what happened in the seven years that we just came out of. As the Lord, the children of Israel. Bring an offering and a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. There it is. I will also take of them for priests and Levites. There's the priest class. In the millennium, saith the Lord. As for the new heavens, uh-oh. And the new earth, uh-oh. Revelation. I don't read the Old Testament. Which I will make shall remain before me the new heavens and earth never go away for thus saith the lord so shall your seed and your name remain israel god's all finished with the jews that's a violation of isaiah 66 22 as much as the new heavens and the new earth so will the children of israel be eternal and it shall come to pass that from one new moon in the eternal life, in the millennium, to another, and from one Sabbath to another, there's a law, shall all flesh come and worship before me in Jerusalem, saith the Lord. Here's your month monthly. New, new moon to new moon and your weekly, your Sabbath to Sabbath in the millennium. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against. There's going to be a, a great burial ground in the millennium, all the people that Jesus trampled on. Down south in the Dead Sea region. For their worm, you do recognize that expression. Their worm dieth not, you do. Shall not die. Oh, Jesus quoted from, from Isaiah when he said, Their worm dieth not. But who reads the Old Testament anymore? And they shall be abhorring unto all flesh. Look at those people that hated the Jews. Don't even, don't even mention their names. Don't even have anything. They're, they're against Jesus Christ. They're against. Don't even have anything to do with them. 